hey everybody. Um, we got Rob and Dean here with Chufimi Vlog. First couple videos that we posted were, you know, kind of funny and, and not real serious. But tonight, we want to take a second to, to talk about something a little bit more serious. So, hope you guys can learn a little bit from what we have to talk about. So, the subject we're going to talk about today is type 1 diabetes. For those of you that don't know, Dean here has type 1 diabetes. And it's been a struggle for him. So he's had it for three years now and, and it's been a struggle. So something that him and I have tried to do is learn more about it and try to get it under control so that he can live the most normal life possible. Dean's gonna tell you a little bit about what he goes through and, and, and just his story about dealing with type 1 diabetes. anything about diabetes hopefully we can educate you a little and maybe if you see some of these symptoms in yourself or your friend or family member you can help them out with type 1 diabetes the body doesn't produce insulin um, the body breaks down carbohydrates that we eat into blood glucose um, or blood sugar um, and the body uses that for energy insulin is the hormone that the that the body needs to get glucose from the bloodstream into the cells. So with insulin therapy and, and like other treatments that, that you can do, people can learn how to manage their diabetes a little bit better and, and live long and healthy lifestyles. So there's two types of diabetes, type one and type two. Uh, I have type one. Most of the time when you have type one diabetes, you get it as a little kid but there are cases and there's a lot of people that get it in their late teens and that's what happened to me, I got it when I was 19. About 1.25 million Americans have type 1 diabetes and an estimated 40,000 people will get diagnosed each year in the US. Um, some of the things that, that people with diabetes deal with is excessive thirst, fatigue, hunger, uh, sweating, nausea, vomiting, bedwetting, excessive urination. Another one, a big one is blurred vision. Your heart rate is fast. You constantly have headaches, always tired, and rapid weight loss. Uh, so when I was 19 years old, I was living in a little house behind my grandma. As a young kid, I was really active. I played baseball most of my young life. I got into skateboarding really young. On the weekends, you wouldn't even find me at the house. I'd be just roaming around town on my skateboard, just finding stuff to do. So when I was 19, I was losing a lot of weight. I was getting really skinny, and my family just didn't know what was wrong. So my grandma decided that it would be best that I went and seen the doctor. A couple days later, I went into the doctors. They took a bunch of blood, and they told me they'd do tests and just sent me home. So a couple days later, we were at a family dinner and my dad got a phone call and it was from a doctor. And they told him that I need to go to the ER right away. We went in and a nurse pricked my finger and tested my blood. And my blood sugar was just over a thousand. And she like freaked out, ran out of the room, got a doctor, they came in, rushed me into a hospital bed, hooked me up to an IV, started taking blood, and they just pumped me with a bunch of insulin and told me that I was diabetic and I would have to be on insulin for the rest of my life. You say that you were at about a thousand. What's a normal, what's a normal range for someone like me who doesn't have diabetes? Normally, you guys fluctuate when you eat, but your insulin that your body creates brings you back down to around like 70 to 90. So pretty much what it is, my pancreas, which creates the insulin, just decided to stop working. And so I remember that night pretty well too. I had at least like three sodas before I went and that's why my blood sugar was so high because like the only way I can describe it is you can't quench your thirst. So I would literally chug a soda and right when I would throw it away, I would go grab another one and still be thirsty. 
and I would just keep drinking and drinking. And what kind of things were going through your mind when the doctor said that you had to be on insulin for the rest of your life? So my first thoughts, I was really scared because I really had no idea what diabetes was and what I would have to do and how it was gonna affect my lifestyle. So then what happened after that? So you, you're in the hospital, how long were you in the hospital? So after they pumped me with a bunch of insulin, I had to stay in this room with a bunch of other patients for about like four or five hours until they finally got me a room upstairs in the ICU because they wanted me to stay overnight just to watch me. And I just remember they, they wheeled me up to a room I called my mom and she was freaking out and a couple other family members they were all really scared they would they would come in every about like three or four hours to check my sugar to make sure it was coming down and make sure the insulin was working a bunch of doctors came and talked to me I even had one of those like iPads just roll in with a doctor on the screen and I talked to a doctor through an iPad it was kind of weird you like have to take them everywhere with you if you were walking around? No, like, I was just laying there and they told me, they were like, like, okay, we're gonna have this doctor. No one was like, remote controlling it. And it just like, came in the room, <laughs> like right in front of my bed. And I was just talking to him for a little bit. And he was just asking me a bunch of questions. Man, what a mess up way to like, mess with somebody, right? Like in the middle of the night, <laughs> like had someone <laughs> wheeling in there, right? Before I went to the doctors, about two or three months before I actually went in to get my blood tested and drawn and everything, I was noticing these symptoms, but I didn't know they had any correlation with diabetes because I, was, I wasn't educated at all about it. I was drinking a lot, like I would chug a water bottle. Right when I set it down, I would go grab another one because I was so, so thirsty. And I was waking up at least like three to four times in the middle of the night just to go to the bathroom. I was having a hard time sleeping. I was up all night because of the bathroom. I was having stomach pains. And I, I can recall a couple times when my vision would get blurry. It wouldn't like be blurry, but there would be like a, like just like a single spot like in my vision that would kind of be blurry and I would kind of like shake my head or blink my eyes and try to get rid of it. Tell us about the time that you uh, completely lost your vision. When you're newly diagnosed with diabetes, they give you these shots. So right when I left the hospital, I went and see my doctor and she gave me these like syringes that were like pre-filled with insulin. And she taught me how to like shoot myself with the insulin in, the, in my stomach and how to check my sugar and she gave me all the stuff that I needed and she gave me a prescription. It was pretty hard the first week because my mom was actually with Rob here um, helping him with the surgery. When I came home, I pretty much just had to do it all by myself and that was really tough, giving my, myself a shot, you know, all alone. About two weeks into taking the shots, uh, my body wasn't used to the low blood sugars my vision actually went completely blurry for a whole week so i woke up one day and i just couldn't clear my eyes like my eyes were just blurry and i would blink and couldn't focus on anything and it really scared me and that was a really tough week it was really crazy and i went to the doctors and they said it's normal they told me to go get my eyes checked so i did and everything was kind of fine so they were just like go home and it should get better about a week later after losing my vision just how it happened i woke up again and boom like it was clear and it was gnarly like i couldn't see i couldn't write i couldn't drive that's wild man that's i couldn't imagine just like just gone just like that you know how you can make your eyes cross-eyed and kind of blurry yeah but you could focus them back. Yeah. I couldn't focus them back. So it was like just crazy blurry the whole time. Yeah, it was blurry. It was really blurry and I would get like headaches. So I would just like look down or close my eyes for most of the day. And it came back 100%. Just yeah. like normal. Yeah. Like it never even happened. Yeah. That's crazy. I think I told you, but I like jerked off the night before. <laughs> Why are you saying this? <laughs> Wait, so you didn't tell me this. So still tell me anyways. So I jerked off the night before and you know like, oh, don't know if you lose your vision. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I freaked out and I was like, oh no. He thought oh, he jerked no. off and lost his vision. <laughs> I did, dude. I was like so scared and like, 
I I like almost told the doctor that too, but then she was like, no, it's normal because of insulin. And I was like, oh fuck, thank God. Like, dude, yeah, like seriously, I was like, oh damn, I just fucked myself. Right now. Like, what did I do? Um, like on a day to day basis, like when you wake up. So say you're not managing your diabetes, right? Say you're just you're not checking, you're not giving yourself insulin, you're eating and doing and drinking whatever you want. How does that, like, what does that do to your body? Was it, you personally, how does it make you feel? You just feel really tired. Like, you don't want to do anything. Every body part is really heavy. Like, it's heavy to walk. Like, you just want to lay down, take deep breaths. Like, honestly, when I feel shitty like that, and I lay down, I feel way better. I don't know why, but laying down makes me feel better. Normally, when someone gets diagnosed with type 1 diabetes, correct me if I'm wrong at any point, it's normally when they're a child, when they're really young. So they can grow up, it's normal for them when they get, when they reach, you know, their 19, their 20s. It's normal to have to constantly check and be careful what you eat and giving yourself insulin. One of the struggles that Dean had and still has to this day is, I mean, he learned it when he was 19. And almost 20 years old is when he, when he learned that he had diabetes and, you know, to, to be an adult and have your entire life just flipped upside down can be hard. And it's not always easy to just change your life and say, oh, well, this is what I have to do now. Yeah. How do you deal with that? Like, what do you, what do, you do to try to make sure that you're, you're on it and you're checking yourself regularly? I don't know, I'm still working on that. It's, that's the hardest thing, is to live your life a certain way for so long and then have somebody tell you, that you have to change literally everything. That's one thing about type one diabetes is that I can still do everything and eat sugar, eat pizza, eat ice cream, eat all that stuff. I have to do the math and calculate how much insulin I have to give myself. Because like a normal person, their, their pancreas does all that for them. It does math. Like, you guys don't realize, but your body is doing math for you right now. And that's just crazy to think about. That, like, whatever you eat, your pancreas says, okay, you're eating this much, so I need to release this much insulin to counteract that and break it down and turn it into energy. Hit or miss, I guess they never miss, huh?